What's going on guys? Today I want to show you the canoe that I built and some of the modifications that I've done to it. And here's why it is the ultimate fishing machine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work my way from the front to the back. What I first did to the front was I added this eye bolt and this will help me uh, tow my, my, my canoe and secure it onto my trailer. So the front here I have a 55 pound thrust has wing uh, trolling motor. Um, the reason why I put it in the front is that allows me to have a lot more control over the canoe uh, when it's in the front of the boat rather than in the back. I also added navigation lights uh, in the bow of the boat. So on the left hand side I believe it is red um, and then on the right hand side it is uh, green. I wired everything. I drilled a hole. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but I drilled a hole into the canoe itself and then wired everything over to the right hand side of the canoe here. In the front of the boat, I have uh, LED lights uh, throughout this whole boat, but actually in the front I have uh, two uh, LED strip lights, one on the left hand side and uh, the other on the right hand side. These LED strips, they are actually uh, white in the center of them. I painted them black um, because the contrast of the white with the black canoe uh, just didn't look right to me. So um, I did the tedious work of going through and painting each individual line black. And uh, I think in my opinion, it looks a lot better that way. So all of the wiring from the, um, the bow lights over to the LED strips are wired over to the right hand side in this wiring tube. And then it is routed to underneath the seat here, which is then routed all the way back to my switch panel in the back, which I will cover later in this video. Moving on, the 55 pound thrust trolling motor is connected to my battery box. This battery box is powered by two 60 amp lithium ion phosphate battery. Uh, they last me a very long time. I've gone out on the water on the tournament for eight to nine hours and they've lasted me all day. So I have no problems with that. I have them connected to a 60 amp breaker in case anything was to happen on the water. I'm not going to start any fire. That's just uh, some sort of insurance on my battery as well as my trolling motor. I have them rigged up in parallel. So in theory, I have about 120 amps of uh, available battery. So the deck here is probably one of the most tedious job on this canoe itself. Uh, so underneath everything I have, I believe a 0 0.063 aluminum sheet um, laid down as a foundation, uh, as a baseboard. 
On top of that, I have an eighth, I have eighth inch uh, aluminum, right angle aluminum um, framing. And then the, the actual deck material is a plywood. It's a half inch plywood that I've stained and painted black uh, to make this deck. This part was probably the most tedious part of the project, uh, as well as the wiring of, of all the lights and the electronics. Now my fish finder is a Garmin uh, Striker 7 inch uh, side view uh, fish finder. It does its job, it tells me the depth, the water temperature, um, there are a couple features that I wish I had like mapping, uh, but for the most part it does, does its job. I currently have it mounted on a Rambo, 1.5 inch Rambo here, um, and I've secured it with uh, rev rivets. Um, so that way, I mean, this, this does not move at all when I'm traveling down the lake or even on the, the car when I'm transporting it. My transducer is actually mounted on the side of the canoe uh, with a one inch Rambo. Uh, the good thing about this style of canoe is that the lip is actually sort of like a track. So what I did is I drilled a hole and then the, the actual mount to the, uh, the, the Rambo is fitted right inside of this lip so it doesn't move. So really whenever I need to use my transducer I would just uh, push this this rod down here and uh, put it into the water and that's how I'll use my transducer. The deck itself I have uh, four storage hatches for all of my gear. Uh, two of them is really used for um, my personal items um, and then the, this one here is used for all of my wiring. I did add these rod ties to, to the deck and they're really used uh, for traveling. And when I travel with my, my canoe, I put all of my rods here uh, while I travel. And so far they've, they've worked great. I haven't had any issues. I haven't lost any rods uh, falling out of my canoe or flying out of my canoe while I'm transporting it. So they, they work uh, great. Each lid is fitted with a hatch lock um, mechanism. Uh, they, they work fairly well. Uh, these hatches are really hard to install. So um, not all of them are properly fitted to, to latch on really tight. And that's okay because I, I really only use it to, to just make sure that it, it closes when I'm traveling. The locks itself are, are useful if I need to stop by a gas station and or, or use the restroom at a pit stop so I can lock all my gear in here without having to worry about some sort of criminal stealing all my gear. And as you notice, I've also configured some of the hatches to have this lip around here that will sort of uh, drain away the water whenever it rains um, onto the floor instead of getting into my hatches themselves. This is sort of like uh, a dry hatch if you will call it on, on bass boats. Each hatch will store about five, um, I want to say 35 or 36 uh, tackle boxes. On the back here I have two rod holders and they're really used for uh, when I go trolling on Lake Michigan. Um, I can set up two rod holders to, to troll and then if I ever need a jig I can just jig out the back but these really are used uh, when I go trolling on Lake Michigan for salmon or trout. Everything is routed to the right hand side of the canoe. Even the wiring from all, all the LED lights from the back. Um, they are all wired to the right hand side of the canoe and then routed to this uh, hatch here. 
this hatch is sort of the brain or, or where all the wiring goes to to control all of the electronics on this boat. All of my electronics and my lights are powered by this 30 amp uh, lithium ion phosphate battery by Ant Outdoors. All of the wiring are uh, ran to this bus bar. I, I, w I shouldn't say all of the wiring, but uh, all of the lights are ran onto this bus bar and then routed uh, into the switch here. This uh, six panel switch here. And then it is uh, ran to the fuse and then the fuse to the actual battery itself. So for my switcher, I'm not sure what the brand is exactly what it is, but I bought it off of Amazon. The switch all the way to the left is my bow lights on my navigation lights and that controls that. Um, I can turn it on and off. This light here is my stern light uh, or my or power to to charge up my camera if I ever need that uh, because I do have a power stick here in the back here to to record myself whenever I'm fishing tournaments or just leisurely fishing. Um, this switch here is for my running lights or my deck light. Uh, it's pretty cool. I use this really for, for nighttime fishing. Uh, this switch here is for my storage light. Um, everything in my storage boxes or hatch is lit by two I, would, I want to say about six inch LED strip lights. They're mounted um, on the, the, the top and bottom of these hatches. So at nighttime, when I'm, try, when I'm trying to get some sort of gear, I can have better visibility into my hatches and not kind of fumble my way around trying to find a particular lure or bait. So this light uh, powers all of the electronics. Currently, I only have it power, powering my fish finder. Um, in the future, if I do have additional fish finder, I'll probably route it over to this switch here and uh, use it to power that, excuse me, that fish finder as well. Now, uh, it's currently on. If I turn it off, you know, that would obviously turn off the fish finder itself. So. I find that you know if you're if you're out on the water all day and you're fishing shallow, you don't really need the fish finder. You can certainly turn it off to to um, save on battery life. This last switch here at the right hand side is used to power my power pole in the back. Um, it is wired, like I said, to the back of the canoe Up here. Um, I can untether this strap here and then. Uh, plug it directly into the power pole itself here. When I'm fishing kayak tournaments, I mount my power pole to the back of the stern instead of my gas motor. Uh, that's just a lot better for, for the setup style, but that's, that's what I can only have it set up if I'm using uh, my motor. This hatch is used to store all of my miscellaneous stuff. So all of my um, fish line, uh, I have a fire extinguisher in there, my, my glasses, I have a flare gun, I have um, a, a horn, air horn in there, uh, charging cables, fish identifiers here, my fishing license as well as my, my registration for the canoe itself. Uh, pen and permanent marker um, and a fish scale. At the back of the canoe it is powered by a 3.5 uh, 
a horsepower Tohatsu uh, four-stroke motor. Um, it uh, moves me along pretty well as an in-house gas tank which is located here at the cap. So I would have to take this cap off and then fill it out in the water uh, using this, this method here. I carry a separate gas tank with me on the water so it makes it a lot easier to transport rather than having a dedicated tank on the canoe itself. This uh, Tohatsu 4 stroke 3.5 motor, depending on the wind and the current, it'll move me about 7.5 seven miles per hour to, to 9.5 miles per hour. Um, obviously, like I said, dependent on the weather and the wind and the, and the current of the water that, I, that I'm on. The trailer itself, I redid the bunks for the trailer. This is a, um, a jet ski trailer. Uh, it came, I want to say about, a, it came with like a five to six foot bunk board. I want, I want to say it ended about like maybe right here. What I did was I purchased uh, two new two by fours. They were pressure treated and I took out the old one, recarpeted this one uh, with marine glue as well as I stapled some of the, the carpet back onto the board and then I mounted it back onto the trailer but uh, it works very well for the most part um, it's longer than the average jet ski bunk boards I, I wanted it to be longer because I wanted to hold the canoe um, and, and space out some of the weight of that canoe along the boards another thing that I added onto the trailer is um, these quick release uh, tie downs. I think one of the most frustrating thing about kayak or canoe fishing is putting everything back on and off of the canoe. And that uh, is probably one of the most non-talked about topic with canoe kayak fishing. It is so hard when you when you just got done with a day of fishing to put everything back onto the canoe or to the to the truck. It just takes so much work. So what I did is I added these uh, retractable straps, and I can pull it and mount it directly into this U-boat here. And this U-boat, I can then, you know, um, tighten it up using this here. And this retractable straps, uh, they hold the canoe very well. I mean, I've had no issues with it moving on my trailer. I've gone over 100 miles with this, this setup. The same thing is on the other side of the canoe. Uh, the same exact setup. One of the reasons why I got an aluminum canoe versus a plastic canoe is because of this reason. Whenever you tie down a any sort of plastic craft, whether that is a kayak or a canoe, you will mold the the plastic into the shape of whatever um, base you have it on. So uh, that's that's one of the big no-nos of um, tie downs. You're not supposed to use tie downs on or ratchet straps, I should say, uh, on, on plastic canoe and kayak because you will um, deform the actual hull of the, the, the craft. This little gadget here, it's called Quick Cleat. Um, I bought it off of Amazon. Uh, it's not too expensive, but I use it to to tie down uh, my fish grip with that, that rope, a quarter inch rope. Whenever I catch a fish, I will use the fish grip to, to hold the fish and then throw it into the water and uh, put the leash onto this quick cleat so then um, I can keep the fish healthy and alive while I pull up my measuring board and get my camera ready to, to take a photo of it. This contraption here <clears throat> is used to store a lot of the longer items that I would use uh, for fishing. So some of the things in here is my measuring board, my catch board for tournament fishing, um, as well as my stern light, and then some of the ropes to 
um, drag my canoe onto the, tr the trailer itself. So um, it's, it starts from here and I th believe it goes to about right here. This is held by two very strong magnets. Um, I've taken it for over 100 miles and it never came loose, so it's it's fairly sturdy. You know. Last thing that I that I did to my canoe is I added a I want to say a quarter inch um, EVA foam onto the deck, and this makes the the canoe. A lot more comfortable in standing up with. Um, when you're standing up in a canoe, uh, if you've ever been in an aluminum canoe, it gets really hot and so this EVA foam will not uh, absorb the heat as much and so it makes it very comfortable on your feet, uh, especially if you're barefooted. Um, it also doesn't soak up water as much. So I thought about putting like a carpet, marine carpet, onto my deck but I didn't want the deck to be soggy if you know what I mean. Uh, because I've been on boats where, the, where when it gets wet, the, the actual carpet gets kind of soggy and wet, and I just don't like that feeling. But this EVA foam, it doesn't soak up water. Um, obviously, if you drench it in water, it will um, kind of pull up, but uh, whenever it rains or whenever you get water on this, uh, this deck, it, it really just kind of beads off. Um, so I, I really like this material. Uh, it's held up fairly well, you know, there are some some scratches and, and stains on it, but for the most part, I've, I've had fish blood on here. And what I've done to clean it is just use uh, mild uh, dish detergent and use a sponge, and using the abrasive side of the, of the sponge to just kind of scrub off the, the stain and everything has come off so far. So there it is guys, thank you for watching this video, remember if you found this information useful please consider subscribing and liking this video to help the YouTube algorithm.